What's up? It's your boy Noobscape back at you again here in Inferno Coaching Guide Series. Another guide here. Thank you, JNev, for submitting this. And by the way, anyone can submit a guide they want. This is currently the only guide I have the reviews, so and now's a great time for you to submit because I'll go ahead and review it right away. But without a doubt, JNev said that he's a new Inferno Cape attempter, which means that he's only done like one to five Inferno attempts. He said this time he, he had a better submission. He already submitted a previous one where he only made it to about wave 30. And this one he makes it into the 40s. And he says to go easy on him because he's a new Inferno Caper, as you can kind of see by him not being able to flick around here, which is not a big idea. He told me to go easy, but I'm not going to go easy because I don't go easy on anyone. The best way to learn is to learn from your mistakes, and I'm going to point out every single one of them and let you know every single possible way you could have improved. I mean, you could have flicked the mage there when he went on that side, but we're going to go ahead and get going with this guide. And by the way, it's on the screen if you want to know how to submit your own. I totally recommend. It'll be somewhere over here to the left side. Uh, you submit your own gameplay. If you're struggling, I'll help you out, and we'll get you that Inferno Cape. By the way, big shout out to there was three people today on my Discord. By the way, join the Discord. I'll help you personally. There was three people all in one day that got their Inferno Cape just from using just a card. So I thought you had this down, but what you did right here... You shouldn't have done right there. You the reason why you're barrage in the middle uh, minion here is so you can attack all three. And if you're moving from this spot, you're not going to be able to attack all three anymore. So since you moved away and now you're blood barrage in that, you're only attacking two at once. Where this could have killed the KO'd both of these two, which means you would have to take one or two last melee hits. Um, and we just attacked the middle one. And then yeah, the the second priority is since you're less likely to attack this, you blood barrage the second. But just if you ever get in the situation where you can't possibly barrage all three of those little, minion, little minions, go ahead and do that. So I don't know if you brain farted on this wave, but you have your blowpipe equipped. And then you um, pray augury and then you attack it with your blowpipe. And then you realize, oh no, I need to have my mage gear equipped. Uh, you can't brain fart in the later waves. And then also if you realize you blowpiped it, you equipped your mage gear and you're running away. If you ever get into a situation where there's nibblers over here. And you're running away to the pillar, that's like not something you want to do. You generally always want to follow your nibblers because now you're just wasting time running back there. Maybe you could have stopped a few hits, which again doesn't really matter too much because these are high. Oh my god, okay, now it now it's mattering. These got way too many hits, especially at this low of a level, to let the these nibblers on wave eleven just destroy this pillar like that. Uh just I guess pay attention, don't brain fart on the waves and always make sure you have your barrage out first. Okay, I'm noticing something and may not be a total trend, but you equip Augury really, really early. In my last Inferno review, when I was just reviewing myself, I showed that you could like one or maybe two tick that Augury on, not like have it totally on in the lower waves. When you get to like the higher wave, 50 plus, yeah, have this on consistently until you get behind a pillar for defense. But you only need it for like a few seconds. You did a good job barraging that and maybe recognizing that you needed to run over here. But honestly, in my opinion, it's a low wave. You're 99 HP. And you can, what I would have done here is I would have just stayed in this spot. I would have went here. I would have prayed melee and just tanked the two bats until these nibblers were dead. And then maybe tried running away from the melee. Because on a low wave, wave 12, these nibblers need to die as soon as possible. And maybe if you take one or two hits and your HP is lower, then play defensive. But as when your HP is high, play aggro. Kill these DPS as quick as possible, then find a safe spot on the lower waves, which is what you're on right now. So then you come back and you're on this side of the pillar and you decide to take another hit on those guys. When realistically, I probably would have just been, if I was a, you know, a big noob, which I am, I would have just been sitting in this melee spot or melee safe spot, praying melee, taking the two bats, who cares? Probably only would have taken a few hits and then maybe ran over here or tried to safe spot in the melee. But uh, what you did is fine because it works because you kill them. Just on the later waves, you may run into an issue kind of thinking to run over here. So what I'm just thinking in the future is you just stand there and maybe even um, the a way you can learn this is you start from here and then you you hit them once. You run like up a little bit to drag the melee up towards like this side and then you run to this back melee spot right here. And um, right here, you that you would be safe from the melee, which you would drug over here. That's another way of how to do it without really moving much. And then you would have been just been able to um, barrage nibblers from that one spot because they were frozen. Yeah, I'm noticing you you really favored this weird side of the pillar. If it was me, um, 
you can get this first barrage. You notice it's a 20, so you know you're not going to hit. I would have had my auger flicked on. I would run here to this this spot or something behind this pillar because I think of this as I, I could put the blob behind this wall and then I pray melee and I'll, I won't be tanking anything because I'm praying melee so I'm protected from him. The wall means I'm protected from him and this is favorable on this like back side because you can see all the nibblers and barrage them in cover. If you're running completely around to this other side, which you choose to, you then have nibblers alive damaging the pillar that you can't attack, and be, and you're still not within range of this. It's gonna yeah, it's gonna pull you out. I mean that's fine from the melee, -er. but it's just I, less ideal because you could have killed these nibblers without still not taking any damage just from sitting right here and praying melee. And if you could get fancy with it, what you could do is if you didn't want to have to actually even tank that melee hit. Yeah, again, you could like start from here, run like two squares up to lure the melee up here, and then run to that safe spot, and it would work without you even really moving much, and you still be within the view of the melee or the nibblers. Now it's causing an issue because you have like three over here you can't flick, and now you're coming over here and you're gonna try to kill this nibbler, which brings you in range of the melee, and it, you can see what's what's wrong here is because you chose to kill this blob, but you didn't actually like finish the blob kill. So what was the point of trying to kill the blob if you're not gonna finish it? I, the way I like playing is if you're gonna do something, you better commit to it. So this blob, if you wanted to DPS it down first and kill it first, you gotta completely wipe it first before you go on a melee. Cause now you really haven't saved you from taking any damage. And you're still gonna end up killing the nibbler while taking as much damage you would have as if you just attacked the nibbler first off. So it's just wasting pillar HP. And now you're gonna, with you just lured yourself out within the melee range of that. And um, if you don't know, you can't stand over here. It, it dugs, you're lucky. If the melee is on this side and you're standing all the way over here, it will come around. The only time it doesn't come around is if you're standing on this safe spot. It's just how it works. So I wouldn't stand over on this side if the melee is over here. And now you're running all these issues. I just want to explain like how much harder it was to the way you chose to solve it. When my, sh my solve would have just been walk here, pray melee, or walk actually anywhere along this line, pray melee and DPS the nibblers, and you'd solved, because then you just kill the melee first. But then you, you're doing all this running around, you can't prayer flick, these are still kind of out of your range. It's gonna dig again. <laughs> if you, see, you made it just really complicated, and I just wanna show you how simple of a solution it could have been. And I'm gonna guess in the future, you're gonna die from going over here uh, a little bit too much, because you're you're like defaulting this side of the pillar because you're just getting scared of things on the right. When realistically, the better option is either A, tank them, B, try to save spot them down here, but maybe like just praying one thing. In my opinion, is better than going over here is really just transitioning to the complete opposite pillar. So let's just see. Hopefully you do something really, really nice here. I'm really looking forward to a good play. You get a blob in a, in a melee. So let's see if you learn. But you didn't learn because you're doing the same thing. And I told you this is this is gonna come into play a lot. Then I don't know if you noticed this, but when your <laughs> your pillar has an HP bar, and when that HP bar is up, <laughs> HP bar is up, you gotta stop it. It's only way 14. You're gonna run into severely, severely bad issues. Wave 50 plus when you eventually start getting there because your pillar is going to be very low HP when they should be full green, honestly full green bar at that point or very close to it because this, like I've said a million times, it's like a, a savings account. You want to put money into it, which is the green. You don't want to have debt, which is red because what later on, you know, when uh, coronavirus and all that stuff hits you hard, you're going to want to take out loans and that HP is going to, you're going to bring it down all the HP bar all the way down. Boop, 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 boop. It's all going to be red except that you're going to leave a little bit green and the harder way is because you're going to prioritize living. You need it at 99, 85 HP, lower waves be A, A, killing nibblers. Every single wave, first off, every single time. The simple way to solve it, I mean, I think I, it's the same, the same solve. Like all three times you've, you've ran to that other side of the pillar, it's the same solve. And I don't know if you recognize that you can do this solve for like almost like 99% of your easy solves are all done the same way. It's barrage once. It's run to somewhere on this bottom line, wherever it's relevant. Sometimes it's this spot if your corner stays spotting something coming down here. Sometimes it's here if it's a melee that's coming. And sometimes it's like down here and if you want to DPS the um, nibblers that are on the pillar. But in your case, you run here, you pray melee so you're not taking any melee damage. And then you just kill the nibblers first off. And then all you need to do is kill the melee and then it's a stack. It's a stack solve, and those are pretty much all solved the same way. But instead, you're choosing to run. I'll fast forward it. You're going to kill something, and you're going to think about killing the blob. The nibbler is still munching, dude. That is not good. 
And at this point, you're realizing that you're praying melee and you're doing something that I probably would have originally done. No, you're killing the melee. No, this nibbler has got to die, especially on these low waves. Oh, okay. you're going to. This is a really bad habit of um, leaving the nibblers alive on wave 13. And now you finally kill it. And I'm not a big fan of half committing to a blob kill, half committing to a melee kill, and then deciding that you want to kill the nibblers. And also, you're wearing Jessicar when you just. Um, blood barrage that you could have maybe used an SGS spec instead of on the melee or you could have used an SGS spec on the nibblers if, for those that don't know it SGS spec heals off of what you would have hit so if it has one HP left but you would have hit up to a 40 it heals you based on the 40 you would have hit so specking nibblers is a good idea because they have low defense and I would never be uh, blood barraging a melee or with your just car legs on I could see you got them on your ancestral tops also on but I would just completely take off the legs and I would even take off the shield by dropping an extra restore uh, and Let's see if you get to your inventory somewhere around here. Yeah, you can see your adjusted car legs aren't in your inventory, which means they're equipped. I just wouldn't get in the habit of doing that either. And, but uh, the first thing I would change is you got to do, you, now you realize the armor legs on, which are even better than having just car legs on. But the best is having nothing on. <laughs> you know, that's the way I like it. Nice and uh, nice and air free. But it, you got to get in a way better habit of killing those nibblers, especially on the earlier waves. Because it's later on, I know you haven't gotten to the later waves yet. You're going to need that safety buffer for you. Also, your 88 HP. I never recommend starting a wave at lower than 99. Just get in the habit of that. So you're, uh, yeah, I was going to say, you're standing here. Start your next wave standing in the middle spot. I said before that this is the melee spot. You can still reach the blood barrages from here. But standing in here is just asking to get hit by melee. It's like standing in the middle of the road and expecting not to get hit by a car. You want to stand on the sidewalk. Right here is the sidewalk. That way you're not going to get hit by that oncoming car. If you're standing here, you're really safe from the left side and all the melee is coming from up top. What I would have done is I would have barraged once. You got a 40 hit, which means that you KO'd them. And then the second I saw my XP drop 40, standing from here, I would have ran right here. I can't really see what's on the right side. But I am assuming this is a melee or mage attack from a blob minion. But all I would do is I would have initially run here probably, and then I would look to my camera over here and be like, oh, I'm getting hit by a blob. And then maybe okay, I would run over here and deal with the melee because the bat would be trapped behind. Um, that's what I probably would do in this case, but this is beautiful. Okay. In this case, you, you notice you got the hit. Maybe you were standing in oncoming traffic, but you went over here. You realized the blob's too far away. You can't actually lure it. If it was up here, you would be able to stand in that left corner and lure it in range, but because it's over here, you can't. In this situation, yeah, I'm going to probably take that melee first because whenever you have a melee behind or minions behind a melee, they're always, the bats are out of your range. They don't have much range at all, but in this case, you're choosing to run and which is fine. It's, it, that's honestly completely fine. I don't know if you took a melee here or not, but you could always be, I'll always pray melee as, oh my god, so I'm, I'm trying to tell you like what to pray, and I totally forgot that you're in the wrong safe spot, so I'll run one and show it. The melee spots, I, I was describing this to someone before, the safe, safe spots that happen up on this pillar, the main pillar, are the same safe spots on this side of the south pillar. The melee safe spots will be here and here. You chose to stand on this corner, which would have been fine if a mage or a range minion was coming to this corner say, corner spot. But because it's a melee, you need to always be one step back or else the melee will hit you. It's like standing on oncoming traffic. You stand on oncoming traffic twice now. Um, the beginning of the wave and then also that hit. And so now you realize the correct spot. That's where you should have went to initially. And you don't need to be barraging with your adjusted car legs on. I could see them on from the corner. But... This is an okay idea. I, th I would have rather you transition pillars um, maybe in a different situation because it was possible just to stay on that left side and then kill the me melee first because the bats were not in your range. And it would have been the same thing as you ended up doing except maybe even a little bit easier because now you're going to have to kill these bats running back and forth while flicking the blob on the outside. You just wouldn't have had to done that if you stayed on the other pillar and killed the melee from that left side and then killed the bats. So I could tell you don't really you're not really confident of how to like look at initially like this screen and in one second know where to go. So you gotta notice the the first thing you're looking for is well first of all you you blood barrage and you say I hope I hit a 40. If you didn't hit a 40, you can worry about that later. But the, the in terms of priorities of where you move is where the dangerous most dangerous enemies are. So these are low ways. So these are relatively easier to figure out where the bad things are because there's not too many minions spawning yet. There's two blobs up here, which means that they're out of your range. So my first bet is if the worst threat is up here, I'm running behind this pillar to safe spot them. You think, what's on the other side that I can't safe spot down here? 
The only thing is the melee is coming down. But you could pray melee. Remember, you always have one choice of something to pray. So if it's only one style of combat you're taking damage from, run there because you're not going to be able, you're not taking the other side. But in this situation, you choose a barrage and sit here for um, another hit, which is which is uh, fine if you would have actually hit the nibbler. If you're if you're waiting this long, don't worry about the prayer flex because. You didn't actually prior flick anything. You're just procrastinating, taking hits, not damaging a nibbler before you're running over here. I guess you're maybe trying to time your melee switch. If you stayed here this long, I would have just thrown one more barrage and then put my melee on bef like as I was actually like I click and then press melee as I'm running around the corner. You did take a hit. You're lucky enough it was a zero, and then you recognize you need to kill the blob, which is fine. You just could have done that when you were uh, sitting here doing nothing on that corner. And I don't mean that in like a derogatory way. It's just I want to recognize that you could always be doing something. RuneScape is a game where you're only doing as much damage as you're dealing. Like, and if you're sitting there doing an, doing nothing, you're not dealing any damage. You always need to be consistently doing damage, healing or running or doing some sort of strategy when you were just doing nothing there. You just could have maybe barrage once, ran here, and then you still would have technically been able to barrage those from this side. It just could have been looked a little bit quicker. This is an example of when you should follow your shot. In this screen, you're, you're spawning with one range and two bats, which means it's an easy way because all of those three minions, you're praying range from all three of these. You're not taking any damage whatsoever. You notice now you need two more additional barrages. It's not going to be just one because these two are separated. And you hit a four on this one, so it's going to be, uh, oh my bad, four on that one, so you need at least one more. And when you need one more barrage, and this is an early wave, so it's easy. The no brain decision is you're 99 HP, you're taking zero damage because you're playing range from everything. You just go over there, face tank everything, it doesn't matter, kill it, and then go wherever you want. Later waves, it's a better idea to follow your shot to this pillar. If, if the nibblers are going over here, you want to also be running towards that pillar if it's like, unless it's like a god solve to go here and it's no brain easy. But if, if the nibblers are going over here, it's just easiest for you to run along with them and kill them on your way over. Or you could deal with the later issues there. But honestly, it, you could have just ran over to that pillar, maybe even like not worried about facing. But just think about like when they when the later boys, when they start moving over there, you should be probably thinking of moving over there too. So this is an extremely, extremely common mistake. I can't tell you how many times when people first start using Justicar, they make the same mistake. You're DPSing. Your Justicar car is not on, and you're you're playing range, which means that um, you're only going to be taking the one mage hit from the blobs. You got a 40 barrage, which is great, so you know you, you could either go here or you could go over here, and you don't need to worry about DPSing nibblers. You don't have to worry about damaging them on the way over. It's fine. So I like what you do because you recognize you don't really want to run here because the blobs out of your way. You don't really want to run here because, you know, the range still might not be in your way. So running over transitioning pillars is a great idea, but you're praying range, which means that you're tanking mage damage, which means you do not want your Justicar on. You only have your Justicar on ever if you have prey mage on. In this situation, since the major is not out, you're praying range, which is correct, but you run with armadol in this situation. You come in your inventory and you equip your Justicars because I, I, you think that Justicar is great for tanking, but it's not great for tanking mage hits. You're taking mage hits here, so I just want to be, you know, very clear for you, as specifically for and for everyone watching this, because a lot of people are making the same mistake. Do not equip your Justicar unless you have Prey Mage on. In the case that you're praying range. <laughs> Sorry for that motorcycle. In the case you're praying range, you put on your armadil, you keep your prey augury on, and you run. And the reason why you're taking these hits is because you're taking them from the mage engine. Your mage defense is so bad with Justicar on, you're almost going to get hit consistently every single time. You're not getting hit from this guy. You're getting hit from this guy because you only because you had your Justicar on. If you have both your armadil pieces and your prey uh, augury, which by the way increases your mage level, if you don't know, your mage... Um, the percentage chance that someone hits you with mage is 75% based off your mage level, not your defense level. 25% is your defense level. You're going to be praying augury and your range armor on when you run. It'll take less damage than having Justicar on. Again, Justicar is only on when you're praying mage. And also, don't blood barrage with your Justicar legs on. Just take them off and be naked from the legs down. So you're doing it again here. You have your Justicar legs on and you're starting in a wave that you're praying range. If you're ever starting a wave where you're praying range, your full armadil is on, or your armadil legs in your ancestral top. Do not wear Jessicar until the mages start spawning. Until the mages spawn, you're, you're praying range. So don't use Jessicar when you're praying range. The only time you're using Jessicar is when you're tanking range hits. I just want to reiterate that. I know I said that a lot. But you have your Jessicar legs on when you're running over here, when it should be, prey augury should be on. 
and just to like waste those few extra prayer points you could get them back based off your economy for flicking or um yeah and then just put your uh, armadillo on dude and you would take less hits but you did a good job of dpsing down the hill with nibblers and recognizing that the best move is to go over here so we'll give you credit for that except um just so you know the bat safe spot isn't on this side it's on this side that's why this tile's marked in my videos and obviously on your tile too if you're doing the bat safe spot and you don't want it to come down come over here in this case it is fine if it comes down because you just run back and then you only have to flick one minute at a time which i'm assuming is what you're going to do and then this should come down as well you could step one step back over this way or one step back over this way it's just important to know that if you're stepping down here you can not re safe spot this if you step back this way you could actually re safe spot whatever is on that corner by stepping this way but now that it's already seen you around this corner you can't step back here it's just how the safe spot works and also don't have your just car legs on when you're blood barraging so you know what the better solve in this situation is you you got a one hit ko which is great that's why like starting the the uh, set up the way you do is so awesome you get a lot of one hit kills you're you're just face tanking a blob here you don't need to face tank a blob, or you could even just hold this range prey, run over here, kill this blob. Um, you could be flicking it the whole time too. And then you do my pillar stack method where with a range and a blob, all you do is you you pray range, you attack the ranger, you run back, and then you flick back to the opposite prayer that the blob uh, saw or didn't see. It's just a lot easier because you didn't have to take some of the mid hits. It doesn't really matter because you stayed above like a minimum th HP threshold that it was fine for you to face tank. But it's just like going forward when you get have to do a lot of pillar solves above wave 50, you're going to want to get in the habit of not having to take something in a pillar solve, tank something in a pillar solve. Okay, this wave gets ugly quick. The first thing you do is you barrage the minions and you notice that they're going over to this pillar, which means that you... At the wave, you know, only 30, it's really not that high, your high HP. Just stand here and you only have two more HP to hit because you got such a great hit. Just stand here and you should have just dealt with it right there and killed it. You had time to attack it right there, but instead you choose to run back. And you, I think because you're afraid of that melee coming around, which is, it's at this point, it's too late. It's already going to hit you. It was only going to be one hit. I wouldn't even have worried about it. I would just, you know, rather gotten second, maybe even a third hit, and then try to running somewhere. And then you think, got to think, where am I running? If if you went here, had to take one or two hits, ran here, maybe the melee went here in the safe spot. But even if it did, this pillar is not a good idea. And you choose to run over to this next pillar. But the issue is, you never killed that melee first, which you took a, a melee hit anyway, for for no reason. Don't put on Jessicar unless you're putting um, Prey Mage on. You put your Jessicar on, and now you have Prey Range, which you're tanking the Mage hits So, from the blob. I get it. You want to maybe protect from the melee, but the honestly, I think it's better just to not put it on and run faster than the melee can attack you because you're out of its range. You're going to be taking a lot of Mage hits now. And the issue when you put Jessicar on too is if I'm running another pillar, I'm, I'm running instead of this way that you chose. I run around the side closest to where the Nibbler is, kind of like an arc because I'm still outrunning the melee. -er. It wouldn't be fast enough to hit me. I am. I would have my Armadil on so that way my Prey Mage defense is high. That way this isn't hitting me because my Prey Range is on protecting me from these other two i would either a hit it with an sgs spec on the way over but since this is kind of out of the way i would either i would blow pipe it honestly because you already have your range gear on and blow pipes pretty quick instead you choose to kind of run away from the nibbler which is now going to go damage that pillar it's only one out of three nibblers so it won't be doing huge damage but you chose to run on this pillar uh, you took a mage hit because your just the cars on and you forgot to flick to mage after you ran behind this pillar when that ranger couldn't see you anymore but you, what you choose to hear now is a, a very very bad decision if you're running behind a pillar away from the nibblers you better be killing at least one minion here to make your move worth it if not you might as well just face tank that nibbler and then ran over here because uh that would have benefited you more than running over here doing nothing and then going back and trying to kill the nibbler so what you're going to try to do here is i think you go for like a, a, a like a long range has hit on the nibbler that's over there just munching on the pillar um so you're still taking your time you you have your full justicar on so the percentage chance that you hit it is slightly lower you don't really need your Jessica on here. You're the, if you're praying range, you could maybe do this quicker than the melee. We'll see. You're only going to be taking like one hit. Again, you're praying, not praying mage. So like you're going to get hit by this mage calculated with your Jessica on. Very likely that you're going to get hit. You're going to um, attack it. That melee hit, hit you, but not bad. You splash because you're wearing your full Jessica. I don't think you needed that full Jessica on. I would rather you brewed up like one time. Uh, restored up to regain that mage level, re-equipped your auto cast ice barrage, and then attacked it because you took a. Um, you also would have. I'm surprised you didn't take damage from that mage hit right there. You try it again, and um, you get a successful hit, and then you decide to run all the way like over here. You could have t bowed this too, um, but uh, 
if it was me, I just would have done the whole way differently in the way I, I uh, explained as we were going through this, basically. I would have just focused on killing that first, you know, high HP, not really much damage. You didn't need to have your Jaskar on it and then ran over here. Instead, you, like, kind of did the opposite, put on your Jaskar, ran a, a weird way, and then killed it after um, not killing any of these, which I would have, if you've taken the time to run away from a Nibbler, kill something first, and then go back for the Nibbler. Don't you know, do what you just did. And then you brewed, which is an amazing, you have amazing reflexes knowing when to brew. That was great. I would have hit the brew. Good job on that. Um, and then you kind of have a better solve here. It always works. Like if you run to a pillar and then run back, you will like 99% of the time solve the wave. <laughs> like I, I would love to do a guide where all I do is every single wave, run to that pillar with Jeskar on, run back with Jeskar on. Uh, uh, again, when Jeskar on, when it's warranted, when the major's out. But I would basically run there, run back, and then they pretty much all be solved. And now you could just um, gain your HP back on everything that's left, and it should be relatively easy solve. This way, if you do a better job of solving it, but you have a few little rusty things that you could easily brush up. You hit it like a 54 HP drop on this because you had to call it the bat with it. If you hit the high of an HP drop, you most likely killed all the nibblers too. So I would have either A, this is actually a situation where you can run to this safe spot. I know I hate, I say, I say I hate going here, but it, the blob's already stuck behind this pillar. And then this ranger would have been drawn stuck behind here. You would have only had to like prey melee and kill the melee first. And then you probably would have also um, had to be able to kill the nibblers from there. The bat would have been kind of stuck behind the melee. I, w I would have maybe even chose to run over here. But honestly, what I would have done low wave, like you're, you're 99 HP, uh, I would have just ran over here, like m followed my shot kind of here, and then ran behind this pillar and then see where things went. I probably would have just had to only pray range against these two and killed one of them, probably the bat first. But you chose to go over here, and then so this is the bad thing you do. You run within the melee range of here. You, you try to run over here, and then you realize you, you should have done this if there was a nibbler over here, but if there's no nibblers. You have no need to run this close. And you're running within melee range of him. Luckily, he doesn't melee you. And then you're able to go behind here, and right here, you know that that ranger is not going to attack you again. Pray mage, because this blob's going to hit you with the mage. Right there, it shoots. And you're late on that switch. This is why you took an 11. That's like one of those rusty things where you could switch that to guarantee you never taking that extra mage hit by switching your prayer appropriately when you go behind a pillar. At this point, it should be an easy solve where you step out. You could be stepping out to this bat safe spot, just praying range and killing everything that way because you're really only taking one sort of damage that is after you kill the melee, which does dig. So we're going to go along to the next one. <laughs> so this next wave shows get so this next wave shows a serious case of ring around the rosy you get a 40 barrage so you instantly kill all the nibblers so this should be an easier solve if you want an honest tactic in this time before the melee gets close if you want to run, lure this ranger in even closer within the range of blowpipe you could sit on this corner until it's just about this melee is just about to get close to you and then um either a go to this melee safe spot where um the ranger should be close enough to blowpipe while still melee spotting that safe spot in that on this side if you ran to this safe spot on the melee safe spot on that side you could um lure it in closer or you could either complete transition pillars but yeah it does suck when two blobs are lined up back to back you choose the tebow this but if you chose the tebow this i would be um flicking rigor what you do here is now um a little bit risky because the the main leader is going to dig to you. So you got to think, do I want to run to an another pillar or am I just going to sit here and hopefully like since this ranger is low, I could just like two hit it and then run back and take a few blob hits. You're going to, you should be praying rigor if you want to be taking those two blob hits at this point, like you're still fine on HP, but you're going to take just consistent damage over time because you're not, you know, protecting you from mage in any way. I honestly, if I saw the, t and at this point it kind of sucks. I would have honestly at that point just ran over the pillar. I would have also brewed because you're like, this is lethal damage right here. Never run out of the safe spot and then go back into it because it pops the melee out. You got lucky you didn't get hit there. And I think as a panic, you kind of ran up north, which now puts you in more panic of getting melee or hit by those. You get hit by both of those and then you tank a melee and then you're running around and now you're back to where you started. So you just did a ring around the rosy and then you're taking another bat hit and another mage hit and you accomplished nothing. You just left off exactly where you were. Try to avoid to the best of your power doing actions that make you look like you're doing a lot of stuff but really you're just running in place it's like you know like all those people in track you know club back in high school when they used to like just move their arms fast and make it look like they're trying hard but they're really not running that hard that's what you kind of did right there and you got yourself in a big panic where you could have been lethal but if i rewind back here a little bit i would have at the point where this milliard then digged 
Fast forward here, five, 10 seconds. When this Melior digs, I would have just bailed. I would have bailed and I would have reset the stack. The way this restack would have reset is maybe one would have came around down the corner. You go to the corner safe spot. Everything else all piles in and you would have solved it fine. Um, and if you would have been running in this case since you're praying range, just arm it along, pray augury, run it over. You'll be fine. You're not going to take more than two hits from the blobs anyway. But instead, he just chose to take a little bit too many hits in the blobs. So in this next coming wave right here, it's only wave 38. You don't, you equip your Jester Car legs to start the wave. You actually don't need to equip your Jester Car legs, believe me, until wave 50 when the Major and Ranger both start spawning. You equip your um, Jester Car legs, you don't really need them. Um, you want the extra Mage bonus to ensure that you get that first KO, which you've been doing that a lot because your Mage bonus overall is pretty good. You got 99 range, you're doing a good job flip, flicking the Augury. I gotta commend you on that. Every single wave, you know, that's helping you get those first kills, which helps your wave significantly. And you've been doing a pretty good job on killing the Nibblers now, like, that the Pillars are, like, high. At the, at the beginning, you, do, you didn't really do a good job of that. You're doing a good job now. Um, but you just don't need to be using that Jessicar on until the Ranger and Major starts spawning wave 50. It just helps you, you know, kill them a little bit quicker. And then also, it wouldn't be a Inferno Guide if you didn't do an obligatory flex. So I think this right here just shows that you don't know that sometimes the way the HP rounds up, it's 1.3 hit points experience per, um, like, one hit. So sometimes you get a 39 here. Sometimes the way that rounds, 39 is a KO. You, you actually do get the KO and you run here, which is correct, but then you run out again, which is incorrect. You, I think you could have just waited to see, you know, they all went away before you then ran out. It just it means you're just taking, I guess, extra blob hits before you could have ran over to this side, which I would say is the correct side. And then uh, the bat can't hit you there. If it was me, I'm a complete noob. I would either just DPS this or, yeah, in your case, kill the um, the blob first. But the advantage of DPSing, if you just stay here out of the bat's range, you kill the major first, it couldn't resurrect anything which might help you with time in the long run. So this, you did a good job of showing what I want you to do. You have your Jester Carl legs on, you might not need them away of 40, um, but it's fine. Like, But you you do end up needing them in this wave. You hit a 15 barrage on the majors, and it sucks with this spawn because this backstay spot, although this is my first instinct to run here as well, it's not viable because the major and blobber will just keep on DPSing you, and it's a pain in the ass. So my first, my first thought is when I see like a spawn like this, or this isn't a great option, and the nibblers over here is I'm going to take this line of running and DPS them maybe two or three times before I run behind this pillar and reevaluate. You cho you choose your initial reaction to come over here, but it's a little bit slow for you to react that you need to bail, but you still do make a good decision with that. So props to you. At this point, I'm thinking, I, I honestly I put on my Jessica car. Because I'm taking the two range hits, and you're right now you're at 73 HP, so you're getting to the point where like below 60 with two blobs is, is like um a little bit dangerous, but below 50 I would brew. So you take that one hit though, and you do get to 44. So this is like um a brew a brew once, restore once, and attack. You, you did just you did to hit this neither little bit, this wow this nibbler wow it's getting late at night i can't pronounce my words sometimes you hit this nibbler lethal damage you didn't recognize that you should have attacked the other target as you can see the other one's still living underneath the major minion that should have been your next target after your brew restore one hit run and then honestly i would have reevaluated um you just kind of ran over here and you're you're leaving that one nibbler if it came down to this and it's 44 hp and i saw that nibbler there on this late of, on this wave It'd be a tough decision between just trying to take out one blob, maybe, and then running over to it. Because, like, one blob hit is fine, but two might stack up to lethal damage. So that's also a potential sign that you might need to brew. But again, when you were running over here, you only had your Justice Car legs on. You should have both your Justice Car legs and chest on. Remember, you're praying mage. So now it benefits you the most to have your Justice Car on, because your Justice Car is going to be taking those ranged blob hits for you. So I would have honestly ran back with Justice Car on and barraged that with Justice Car on. Hopefully I got a hit, which you got a hit, so it's fine. But if you had your Jessica on, these things might not have been as bad. You did take a dose of brew or restore. Um, oops, let me rewind that for a second. Yeah, I, th I think it, no, you just took a dose of restore. You didn't brew up, but at this, I might have brewed for that because I would have been scared that the incoming damage would have uh, hit me and I would have tried to tick eat it that way. But you, what you did... I guess it worked here. I'm just saying that you could do it better and potentially save resources in the long run. If you, when you're running, you would just car on and maybe just try to run back and hit that once with just car on. Okay, let me tell you this right now. If you are new and you've never made it to Zuck, you're using all of your resources just to push you to Zuck for that first time or just to put you the jazz, triple jazz for that first time. 
The first time you see triple jads, the odds are not in your favor. You're probably not going to make it through your first triple jads. The first time you see Zuck, your odds are not in your favor. You're probably not going to kill Zuck your first, second, or even th maybe even your third or fourth times. You're going to need a lot of experience to get there. And the best way to get experience is to not start these waves at 80, maybe 85 uh, 84 HP because now you're just 15 HP down which is a hit and that makes you more likely to die which means you have since you have so much resources in your inventory you might die with all those resources which is I hate seeing people die with bruise on them there's nothing I like seeing more than a guy that's just chucked it out for the entire battle you know he makes it to wave like 60 65 even, I don't know and then he dies because he just runs out of resources it's like well you know I got farther than what I would have if I just played a little bit into conserve and accidentally died don't get in the habit of starting these waves on the lower waves, especially, um, it, maybe you could do this when you're like very good at getting to Zuck, but until you're very good at getting to Zuck, don't start these any lower than 99. Use that brew or wait for SGS specs. Actually, well, I wouldn't be saying wait for SGS specs that often because it's not a good habit to get into, but just be SGS specing as much as you can, blood barraging as much as you can. But honestly, I would have tried, probably just brewed there. You have plenty of brews. So what I find my easiest tip with the major minion is when you're standing on you saw how it res it to the inside of the arena. If you're standing and sit on this safe spot when you're killing the major, you don't even need to react to whatever it's resurrecting because you're already out of its line of sight. Since you're standing here, I guess you, you choose to react to here because it was a bat, but you always are forced to, if you're standing on like the line of sight of what it's resurrecting, you're forced to react. Whereas suppose if you go towards the inside of the pillar when you're safe spotting whatever it would be towards the inside, you don't have to react. It's just a good habit to get into. So in this way, if you do a good job, you, you realize that since the melee is over here, you could just take the few range hits, DPS down the nibblers, two barrages does it. But in this situation, you clip your T-bow and you go for a kill on the that, which is just going to spawn three minions, which is like kind of a pain in the ass for you right now. The better decision would have just be to run over here to this corner safe spot. The blob and the mage would have been stuck above you or maybe even on that side corner safe spot. Just kill the melee first by praying melee. It just would have been a lot easier than <laughs> and now it's resurrecting it. You're going to be taking all this damage. Um, and then melee is going to dig, which now you, you're forced to come over here because of the melee safe spot. Um, dangerous here. Do, do not pray uh, melee because this major is actually still in your line of sight. Sometimes it's funky the way the, the corner, like the, the major would come down. In this situation, I would probably just honestly run into this corner, pray the melee to avoid like having to react even more. That potentially resurrecting the major or the melee or like because it's still gonna be in your line of sight i would have um ran like closer in or like earlier to that corner safe spot so you do a lot of run in this wave too i could tell that your lack of experience may play into this a little bit you, you get one barrage good two barrages a 14 drop so you know that they're all dead and i don't really like going to this pillar in this case because the melee is going to dig and force you to run out of here anyway you're, the word, the best thing you're going to do is just like make the major come over here, but you're still going to potentially have to deal from that blob. But the, the melee is what makes this a pain in the ass. So this probably wasn't the best idea to come over here. Even though your nibblers came over here following your shots at this pillar, it might not have been your best idea. I would have probably just killed them. And if I saw this spawn, I would have just ran to this safe spot over here because it brings everything to the inside of the, everything to the inside of this pillar over to the stack here. And then I just would have had to pray melee and kill the melee guy but instead you, you chose to go over here and the reason again i don't like this pillar is because a lot of times the melee digs and you get forced out or there's just a weird way that they stack up and you notice here that you kill the blob and then you realize oh no the melee is coming i'm running and then it resurrects the blob anyway which sucks because now you're you're going to be stuck on potentially having to tank that mage while you're killing their melee -er. so your best decision yep is to run over there with what you have it's to go over there and just honestly i would have tanked the blob because this melee doesn't hit you much and it blocks that melee guy. So it just would have killed the blob, killed the, all of its minions, and then worried about the two meleeers, and it would have been an easier solve provided what you had. Granted, I would have said my original decision just coming over here in the first place instead of that pillar once the nibblers were dead. But with what you had, it was best to stay there. But now you're going to decide to go run all the way over there. It's best to do it with Prey Augury and Justicar on. Your crystal shield isn't on. I noticed that. It, it gives you extra bonus with that crystal shield, so it's something you definitely want to do. Good job on switching to range Prey to block you from the, uh, the blob minions. And this is an easier solve if you just wait for the um, melee to dig to you. It should be fine as an easy stack solve. Which it, it does dig to you. You do kill it. And um, it should be easy from here. Don't don't blood barrage it. No, no, no. You, okay. Uh, you, <laughs> you brood. So you, you're 40 HP. 
which is fine. Then you brew up to 56. Honestly, you didn't even need to brew because you're only going to be taking the um, range and melee hits off these. You can blood barrage them and it works. But if you ever brew down and you always have to restore up, um, you didn't even restore up before you... So whenever you get brewed down, you unequ you unequip your auto, whatever you had a, 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 a casted. But whenever you brew, you always need to restore, and then you uh, need to re-equip it, or else you're just going to run into it melee, which now puts you in a dangerous situation because you're out of the melee safe spot. You ran yourself within the bat's range, and the major still, unless you stay in this like uh, side of the pillar, which isn't favorable right now. Uh, actually, you could be just praying range against the the one mini blob, the two bats. Because this melee would block the uh, the bigger actual melee minion, the, the little melee guy. I would honestly just sit, stay there, sit there and pray. But if you're going to run over here, you're just going to be taking everything. That's just a car on. <laughs> and you got unlucky with the blob spawn. But the just a car on is nice because now you're probably going to be safe from all that damage anyway. And provided this, this is not looking that bad. Oh my god, you forgot it again. The, um, the freaking... The, the the you need to restore and then re-equip autocast dude um and you're 69 hp so this isn't looking good because you're praying mage you know you die here and you know what this is the end of the youtube video so i'm just gonna say rest in spaghetti never forgetty uh let's play this video you know i'm gonna put some six beats we're gonna put a dubstep drop because i'm 100 thousand billion percent positive this is the way you died the, the way you just died was the thing that got me slightly aggravated over there i didn't look at the youtube time until right now and i'm realizing there's only about 10 seconds left in this video and i know exactly what the last 10 seconds are it's you oh god no i died that way well yeah you did because you didn't you knew you didn't have your auto cast equipped over there which is why you melee then you came over here and you still didn't equip it and this has happened to me too it happens to the best of us it's so unfortunate when it happens you come out here you melee it you're getting hit by a bat, a blob, um, a major, uh, these two potentially maybe. Oh, but this is going to be a great stack of damage, boys. I can't wait to see it. Okay, let's hit play. Let's get it going. And what's this? What's the stack? Oh, it's a beautiful stack. I love seeing it. I, I mean, I mean, I hate seeing it, but I, I, it's just a beautiful stack. Um, so, <laughs> so thank you very much for submitting your video. Um, I just want to get another quick replay on that because I know it's sick, but I, d I just do think it's funny when other people mess up. I just want to, you know, reiterate that it reminds me of when I used to mess up and I got ended up getting the Inferno Cape, so... It just reminds me how possible it is for even a noob like you, a noob like me. It, you make these mistakes, you can still get your Justice Card Cape, your Inferno Cape, your Cheese Cape, your whatever you want Cape. But don't get let this get you discouraged. I think it's a little bit funny. I hope you look back on it and you say, wow, you know, that was obvious noobscape. You know, I think it's even a little bit funny now, but I hope you never make that mistake again. I hope your friends never make that decision again. And I hope, you know, your friends' friends never make that decision again. So with that said, everyone have a great day. Go home, eat some cheese and, you know, relax.